This review material will focus on balancing oxidation reduction reactions, or simply redox reactions. We will break this review tool down into four sections. Part 1, the essential background, which will help students conceptualize transfer of electrons when reactions occur, identify which species is being oxidized or reduced, which species is the oxidizing or reducing reagent, and skills to deduce oxidation states. All essential skills required for the next sections. Part 2, balancing redox reactions, employs the half reaction method in acidic solutions. Part 3, balancing redox reactions, that employ the half reaction method in basic solutions. And then in part 4, we will infuse some stoichiometric principles within redox reactions. Redox reactions are when one or more electrons are transferred between reactants. A simple way to remember and identify which reactant is being oxidized or reduced is the mnemonic device oil rig. To conceptualize this process, let's examine the redox reaction of elemental sodium and chlorine gas. Here we see that each atom of sodium donates an electron to chlorine, which affords two cations of sodium and two anions of chloride. Note that the atomic radius changes for each element within the transition state and the final ionic compound, smaller upon loss of electron and larger due to addition of electron. Let's examine one more of these abstract ways of visualizing a redox reaction between elemental magnesium and oxygen. In this example, we see that two electrons are transferred to each oxygen atom to afford the common ions for magnesium and oxygen. Again, note the changes of atomic radius for each element within the transition state and the final ionic compound. To deduce which atom gains electrons, reduction, and which atoms lose electrons, oxidation, one needs to assign oxidation states for reactants and products. Thus, rules for assigning oxidation states are imperative to learn. In no particular order, rule 1, an atom in its natural state is zero. Next, a monatomic ion is the same as its given charge, which is usually the common ion. All hydrogens are plus one, and all oxygens are minus two within covalent compounds, and fluorine is always minus one. With just these basic rules, we should be able to assign oxidation states to atoms within common neutral molecules and common polyatomic ions. So let's apply these rules to assign oxidation states to all atoms within the following molecules. If each oxygen atom is negative 2 within carbon dioxide, then for the molecule to be neutral, we can mathematically deduce that carbon must have an oxidation state of plus 4. In the next example, each fluorine must be negative 1. Thus, sulfur must have an oxidation value of plus 6 for this molecule to be neutral. For the polyatomic anion nitrate, we again know that each oxygen atom must be negative 2. Thus, to deduce the oxidation state of nitrogen, it may help to think of this as negative 6 plus the oxidation state of nitrogen equals negative 1. Thus, nitrogen must have an oxidation state of plus 5. In the next example, potassium permanganate simplifies into plus 1 for the common ion of potassium and negative 1 for the polyatomic anion permanganate. Now we simply assign oxidation states to the manganese and oxygen atoms. Again, oxygen is negative 2, thus to deduce the oxidation state of manganese, it may help to think of this as negative 8 plus the oxidation state of manganese equals negative 1. Thus, manganese must have an oxidation state of plus 7. So now, let's use the skills of assigning oxidation states to atoms by identifying the atoms being oxidized and atoms being reduced, as well as identify the oxidizing agent and reducing agent within a chemical reaction. Drawing from our nomenclature, the first step is to write the balanced equation. And don't forget to include states of matter here. Then, examining how the oxidation states of sodium change, we deduce it as being oxidized. Similarly, we assign oxidation states to the chlorine atoms, and we deduce they are being reduced. Thus, sodium is the reducing agent, and chlorine is the oxidizing agent. 
we first recognize this is a combustion reaction of a hydrocarbon, which requires oxygen and affords carbon dioxide and water as products. Then, examining how the oxidation states of carbon change, we deduce it is being oxidized and the oxygen atoms are being reduced. Thus, methane is the reducing agent and oxygen is the oxidizing agent. Drawing from our nomenclature, the first step is to write the balanced equation. Then, examining how the oxidation states of aluminum change, we deduce it is being oxidized and assigning the oxidation states to the iodine atoms, we deduce they are being reduced. Thus, aluminum is the reducing agent and iodine is the oxidizing agent. Again, drawing from our nomenclature, the first step is to write the balanced equation. Then, examining how the oxidation states of sulfur change, we deduce it as being oxidized, and assigning the oxidation states to the oxygen atoms, we deduce they are being reduced. Interestingly, there is no change to the oxidation state of lead. Thus, sulfide is the reducing agent, and oxygen is the oxidizing agent.